Okay, so you know that we've been working on a new supercharger conversion for the Gen 2 and Gen 3 Hayabusa's. Um, we've had a little bit more of a revision. So this was the original plate that held the supercharger um, and gave us the adjustment for the belt. We're running a tooth belt. Um, but we realized that we could get the supercharger inboard by another eight millimeter with a little bit of uh, re-engineering. So that, you know, it's clutching its straws a little bit, eight millimeter, eight millimeter, but it's eight millimeter further in. It's neater, it's closer to the edges of the fairing and it just looks right. So we've done away with that plate and now we've got this plate and this plate has got adjustment here and here. So we're gonna slide the supercharger We'll slide the supercharger backwards and forwards a little bit to get the tooth belt tension right. And the reason for the adjustment is that we can change the pulley ratio. We can run 32 30 tooth, and that's probably what we'd run as a standard setup. If somebody wants a low boost, then we can run down to 28 and 32, which will slow things down. Or we can turn it the other way around and run 32, 28, and have quite a bit more boost just for racing purposes. So, you know, by playing around a little bit more, we're give, able to give the customer a little bit more um, of what he might want. So we can go from low boost to high boost and something in the middle. And this means that the belt tension will be slightly different depending on the pulley, pulley ratio. So we've got to have this little bit of adjustment backwards and forwards to, to get the belt tension right, depending on what ratio we go for. Um, supercharger outlet. It's just here, which you can see is very tight to the frame, but there's enough room to get a nice tight 90 degree, 44 mil diameter pipe out of there. And this is going to join up with this pipe just here. And this goes all the way around the other side and up to the front of the plen uh, um, intercooler, comes in underneath the bottom of this. So then the air's gone from here all the way around there into the bottom of here and then through the intercooler and into the throttle bodies uh, we're going to put a bigger intercooler in than this one we're going to run another inch wider and another quarter of an inch deeper so we're going to get more cooling than we've had before um, we're running forced air from the front of the duct just here all the way through then forcing air through here, through the intercooler. And then we're going to run the fuel tank about 30 mil off the stop, with a couple of spacers just here, so we can get the air from there out the sides between the frame and the tank. Uh, so we've got some good airflow and help keep the intercooler cool. Uh, we'll put some uh, temperature sensors on this when we finished. And also we'll put uh, some pressure sensors, so we'll see whether we're, we've reduced the pressure drop. We, we've got about three or four PSI drop on this intercooler, and it's one we've been using for a few years. So we thought we'd try and improve on that by making a bigger intercooler, bigger tanks, and see if we can get uh, less pressure drop, and a bit more air into the engine, a bit more power. So, you know, onwards and upwards. Okay, so looking from the other side is the pipe coming from the supercharger up and connecting here with the intercooler and then you'll see if you look down here you can see the air intake for the supercharger and you can see that actually there's quite a lot of room in here uh, we've lowered the breather box we've made another breather box so we've gained some space and we're going to run a two and a half inch tube from the supercharger up here a little bit, a little bit of an angle, and then put a K&M filter in here. Now, when everything's down and, and uh, ready to run, the air filter is going to pick up quite a lot of engine heat. So we're going to run a duct from the outside fairing, and this, this will come in. We'll run a duct from the fairing, shooting air into this space here which will send cold air underneath the tank 
to help get the temperatures down of what the uh, air intake sees. Um, overall, I think it's going to be a really, really neat kit. It'll produce some good power and you've gotten a very, very simple, easy installation compared to anything else on the market, including our own supercharger kit, which fits just here, which is like a three day job. This is going to be like half a day job to get this up and running. Um, can't wait to get the job finished, to be honest. Can't wait to get it on the market. I think it's going to be a great seller. Uh, people who appreciate the engineering, it's going to be a good price. We're going to be looking at about £3,500. So that's less than $5,000 um, to give you 350 horsepower every day runner. I think it'll be a very good kit.